A very warm welcome and good evening to all our viewers. It is with great pleasure that we have Mr. Jose Home from M. De Melo from Portuguese, Lisbon, uh, for the Bassetron feature today. Uh, to give a small brief on Mr. Jose, he uh, has been showing Bassetron since uh, 1984, which is 36 years with the brief under the Dose, Dosete Moinos prefix. He has got over 46 Portuguese champions and world champions all over the world, totaling up to 157 champions from different countries. He has in total won 126 best in shows, 81 reserve best in shows, 69 third best in shows, and a whooping 544 group six winning placements in the FCI. Uh, his uh, milestones have been the best in show in, at the 1995 World Dog Show held in Brussels with his dog, champion Humphrey Dossete Moinos. The Colero de Ore 2001 and Milan, and the best in show at the 2003 Helsinki winner show with champion Come and Get Me, Dossete Minos. That was also the top dog of the year, All Breeds in 2003 in Denmark. Apart from this, he is a celebrated All Breeds judge. He is an all rounder. He is judged in over 45 countries. And uh, this year, that is in 2020, Mr. Jose had uh, judged the Gusset Town in the Crops. So that's a great pleasure to have you, Mr. Jose. So how do you feel about joining us with the Madras Canadian Club for the Bassett Round session? It's a, it's a pleasure for me to 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 have you to, to having me. <laughs> Wonderful. So uh, it, let's start with the first question. So uh, we have had Bassets here in India. We have had some good breeders, but now I think the breed has taken a back seat, and we are not seeing much of Bassets in the ring. So we thought we'd do a session on the breed uh, so as to re revamp the interest in the breed in India. So how did you get started in the purebred dog world? And how did you decide on the Basset Sound as your breed of choice? So uh, um, I, I started, I think that I started since the moment I was born. My, my first dog was, uh, I was not one year old when my grandfather gave me a Estrella Mountain Dog, which is a big breed from group two. Uh, a Portuguese breed, and since then we always had dogs here at home. So um, then, then we had I had also a mini, a, a mini, a, 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 a pincher, a min pin, a, a bitch. That's uh, then we had boxers here at at, at home, but uh, I always wanted to have bassets. So uh, in in the early in the early forties, I bought my first basset. And then, uh, 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 and then I bought <coughs> another bitch, and I had my first litter. Uh, so, but sometime after that, and uh, and this is, I think that it's good to, to to tell you a little bit of my story as a breeder. Um, and and that, I think also that is very important for 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 anyone who wants to be a breeder. You need, uh, uh, so after I had my first and second litter, I was not happy with the puppies I had, with the quality of puppies I had. So uh, I start, I start to uh, uh, go around and to search uh, uh, some dogs because on that time, bassets were very heavy uh, here in Europe. The movement was not good. And we also had a lot of uh, temperament problems. So uh, uh, I went around the world and uh, um, I start completely, you know, I stopped with those lines that I had before and, uh, and I start with a French bitch, which you can show is slide number, picture number one. So that can you show the picture number one? Okay, I start with this bitch. This is my foundation bitch. Here is okay. shown by my wife. And I imported a dog from the United States, mm -hmm. which is picture number two. Breikers Uta Pendragon. Okay. And from these two dogs, everything comes from these two dogs. And I can, I, I can tell you that this male that I imported from the United States, from, from California, mm -hmm. had made a great, great change in Basset in, 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 in Europe. This dog was not a big dog, but a dog with a wonderful temperament. 
As you can see, he was not a heavy dog. Here you cannot see, but he had wonderful proportions because here he is on the grass. Okay. Uh, 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 he is on the grass and uh, he, he doesn't, he, he looks, uh, uh, you know, uh, low to the ground, but he wasn't. And from this mating, from this mating, I had wonderful dogs. And if you can show me picture number three, Okay, you can see him here in the middle. Okay. With on the right on the right side of the picture, Hey mm -hmm. Jude. Hey Jude was world winner in Bern '94. Okay. Best in group and fourth best in show. Wonderful. And on the left side, you have world winner Anfrey Duchet Muinius, which was. Best of breeds at Brussels, best in group and best in show. And at this show, the judge was the FCI president, Hans Müller. And uh, there were 16,000 dogs entered on this show. So that was, that was a, very, a, a, a very nice, uh, uh, nice win. That's so, really something you meant. Yeah. But do these dogs, both these dogs go back to your American dog? Yes. These two dogs, you know, the one in the middle is the one you saw before. Is the, the, the American dog, okay. American dog with the two with the two uh, sons, the the the, oh, the son. doctor, okay. the doctor okay. and the son. Son, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so then you can show the next picture, which is picture. Okay, then some years passed by, and here I have. Uh, at the at the, the club show in Denmark, judged mm -hmm. by uh, uh, um, an Irish judge, uh, come and get me two famous dogs, and they were called the, the the princes of the north, the prince of the south, and the princes of the north. You have mm -hmm. come and get me the Chateauvieux from Portugal, who was here best breed, and Clara, sweet son Clara, and she was from Sweden with uh, uh, um, with uh, with her breeder uh, mm -hmm. uh, and these two dogs for many many shows you know they were competing and sometimes she was she was the the, the best of breed sometimes he was best of breed but they were both and you can see these dogs are, 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 are dogs that are sportive they are not heavy they have good proportions, and that's one of the main things that we want in, in, in the breed. You can show me now picture number, the next one. Okay. Here you can see Come and Get Me. And that's that's a lovely dog, you know, uh, with nice proportions and a wonderful top line. Then you can see the next picture. And you can see something that it's very important, which is the movement. I think that we cannot see. We are, we are not able to uh, zoom it. Okay. Okay. Then but next it's, it's again, come and get me in the move, isn't it? Yeah, that's come and get me in the move. But we have another picture. I think that we can we can uh, have uh, 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 we can have can see a, a better the movement. Okay, we keep, we can see the next one. Okay, here you can see two dogs from the same litter. Okay, and the dog on the left was the dog who was with uh, Jamie Terring uh, in, in in India. He is oh, an Indian. Yes, and uh, just bef just after he came from India, uh, he went to the World Show in Sweden, and he was best of breed. In Sweden, so and these two dogs are are from the same litter, and they they were both world winners. So she was the Cassie bitch, okay. and uh, Oliver was the Cassie okay. male and best of, best of breeds. So we can see now the next one. So that also gives us an Indian connection. <laughs> <laughs> So here you can see uh, 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 the, the world show in Denmark. Mm -hmm. and this was a very famous uh, uh, bitch, Quickie Duchette Muinius. She was best of breed. 
And if you show the next picture, you can see the movement. When people say that bassets cannot move, you can see you can see here the reach. When they are well constructed, the reach that they can have. The dog is really floating through the top. Yeah. <laughs> the tail is a little bit over the the back, but that's you know the the when they move sometimes the the the, the tail goes. Uh, front and back that depending on the and okay. finally we can have this bitch was it's um, buttercup she was a uh, best uh, best of breed at the not best of breed she was cassie bitch at the world show uh, two years ago in amsterdam Okay, so you can see also, you need, in a basset, you need to have substance, but then you need to have elegance. And that's, that, and that's, that, and that's the, main, the main thing. So, and that's a little bit, I have, I have now, uh, 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 I'm showing now a daughter from, from, from this bitch, which okay. is a very promising, promising one. So here you have, that's, that, uh, you have an idea of the type of dog that I'm breeding. Okay, going back to the question again. So, but uh, amidst all the other breeds, you started off with an Estrella Mountain Dog, then you had Boxers, you had Minpins, but why uh, Bassets again? What you know, fascinated uh, you? I think, I think that, that, that um, Bassets are, are, are unique, you know. They have a very strange morphology, you know, long ears, short legs, you know. They have a wonderful temperament. And uh, and you know when when you look at a, 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 a basset puppy, you know you cannot resist, and that's one, one one of the reasons. <laughs> very true. We have had a very good friend of ours from the from the club, uh, that one Mr. Padmachandran, who had bassets. I uh -huh. had the fortunate opportunity to see some of the puppies. As you said, at six seven weeks, they're adorable. They are yeah, really, really yeah, cute. yeah, yeah. That that's they're something adorable. that you cannot that, that you cannot resist. <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you, Sid. Yes, can we go to the next one? Okay. So, how are the Basset Hounds unique from the other breeds, and why are they classified under Group Six under the FCA classification? Okay. Uh, 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 from the other breeds, I already, you know, told you before. You know, no, they, they are a unique dog, and and and. This is very important, uh, why they are classified under the Group 6 uh, FCI classifications. You always must keep in your mind that Basset Hounds are a hunting dog, you know. And that's why we always say that the breed's proportions, temperament and morphology must be uh, 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 for a sportive dog. These are hunting dogs and more and more in the world dog we must think that the, the and we must emphasize that the dogs are fit for function and when you judge a basset uh, uh, and, uh, and that's very important they must have a nice temperament a typical temperament and uh, uh, very important, they have, they must have very nice proportions. Uh, uh, um, you need to have, if you divide it in three parts, and we will show later, we need to have one third, two thirds in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the body proportions, and they must move. You know, you must keep in mind, in your mind, that Basset hounds are hunting dogs. And they are supposed to hunt hair, as you said, so they should be quite agile. Yes, yes. yes. To the <laughs> Great. So, the, can you go to the next one? So, what are the different types of basset hounds? This question okay, is more pertinent to the cousins of the basset breed, I said. If you can show me the, the slides for my presentation, the first three slides. Okay. So, here, in this first slide, you can see that the, the, the word Basset began to be used in France in the 16th century to designate the type of dog 
with short legs. The first mention of the word Basset appears in uh, uh, 1585 by Jacques Rue, early class Van Rieter. And it, it, it's believed that, uh, can you please take the, the, the question? Because we cannot know that, uh, because we cannot re not read all the, all the slide because there is my question here on the bottom. Okay. So you, uh, you want the question again? No, no, I want, if you can take off, take off the question. From okay, the, so can you just take off the question for a second? No, the question to me. Uh, okay, okay, now. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> so it is believed that at this time, and this is very important, there were about 12 variety, variety of bassets. And you can see here a very old picture of a basset and here as well. Next, next slide, please. Okay, but only four of these bassets, from of these twelve bassets, reach our days. The basset mm -hmm. artesia norma, this one here. The basset bleu de Gascogne, this one over here. Next slide, please. The basset griffon vendin, and the basset fauve de Bretagne. Okay, these two bassets with white hair have no relationship with the basset hounds. Oh, okay. Okay, so there were 12 bassets in the beginning, but uh, 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 the, uh, nowadays, the, 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 the only two, the, the, these uh, four bassets are, uh, uh, the other ones are extinct. You know, they're the other eight ones, okay? But these two ones have nothing to do with the, with the Basset Hound. Basset Hound, okay. The Basset Hound was bred using different types of dogs. And mm -hmm. you have, you have uh, uh, if you go over and, and then you can see uh, the rest of the, the, the history on my, on my PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, they were uh, uh, used Beagles and bloodhounds were used in the in, in the in, in the in, you know to 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 reach to reach to reach the best accounts. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. I said, can I have the next question? And while Sidhu is at the, getting the question, for all the viewers, we have the presentation with us. It is a very heavy presentation, so we are not able to run it through fully here. It's got uh, over 118 slides, if I'm right. So, and Mr. Jose has been uh, quite kind enough saying that we can share the presentation. So, for anyone who's interested, we we'll get the, uh, I mean, uh, work around around how to share it on the Facebook page on our Madras Canadian Club platform. We'll do that with due credits to Mr. Jose. So, when we go on to the next question, Said the next question. Okay, Be being an FCA all-rounder judge and a basset hound breeder, do you think bassets are competitive to breed to present in the best in group or showing? Listen, as I've told <coughs> told you before, uh, um, one of the reasons <coughs> and 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 uh, that my bassets are, are, are winning. It's because they are not heavy mm -hmm. and they are sportive. I think that when you judge a best in show, you need to uh, see uh, LC dogs, happy dogs, and elegant dogs. Okay. And uh, you know the because when you judge when you judge the breeds, you 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 search for the morphology for everything on the breed mm -hmm. and you judge the group you need something more to win a group you need mm -hmm. and when you judge the best in show you need a lot more so mm -hmm. a dog a dog <clears throat> when he's showing showed when he's showed in in uh, groups and best in shows uh, he needs to be a wonderful dog and almost a perfect dog 
in in in, in uh, on his uh, uh, um, morphology, and also mm -hmm. and also he must have a wonderful temperament. You can see here a dog with uh, uh, he's shown with, with wonderful proportions. That's what I, I was saying before. You can see that he's not low to the ground. He has the right proportions. He's not very long. He's not very short. You know, normally a nice basset needs to have the double of uh, needs to be two times long as the the, the height of the withers. Okay, which you can see, you can see here, mm -hmm. and. Uh, 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 you know, uh, there are the movement must must have a, a nice top line that he's shown here as well. Nice reach of neck, wonderful ears. You know that are low set with a very nice texture, which is very important because the ears they must curl inside, as you can see here. Ooh. And then the angulations. You know, a basset, it's a 90 degrees angulation. He has 90 degrees in front and also behind. Okay. Okay. And we can see the next one. And this is an example. Then you can see on my PowerPoint presentation, mm -hmm. you, you have here four Bassets. Bassets. Mm -hmm. And if you see, you can see that they are, they are, uh, constru their construction is different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next slide, and we can see a little bit. Okay. So the best one is the C. C. Shows correct proportions, approximately twice as long from the point of the sternum to the point of the buttocks, as it is tall at the withers. Okay? Then the D is cobby, is too short. Then the A is too long. We always say, looks like a train. <laughs> <laughs> and then the B it's too leggy. I told you that they need to be one third, two thirds, and here is 50 50. Okay, okay that, that's wonderful in some other breeds, but not in a basset. <laughs> 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 okay, so, so uh, um, when, 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 uh, when we, when you judge a group and, and, the, and the best in show, you must uh, look for very fine uh, uh, things uh, that that uh, a dog needs to have. Mm -hmm. Great. So I that answers that question on the <laughs> two presence and the best in show presence of a basset town. Yeah. So, so one from Mr. Uh, one of our viewers, Mr. Radha Kitchen Swaminathan, he sure as you call him. So what is, on the topic of ice, the basset hound standard states, that the eyes are soft, sad, and slightly sunken, showing prominent paw. Can you talk about the level of deviation that is allowed? Listen, more and more, uh, um, more and more, we don't want to have hypertype. So uh, 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 the, the the lower lip, the eye lower lip, before we could you could see uh, years ago, you could see uh, eyes uh, with a very loose lower lip with the conjunctive very apparent okay. we don't need that anymore you know even even and as i've told you before the basset hound has bloodhound be behind and for a curiosity you know that um when uh, uh, millers who was the sir evan miller who was one of the the the, the persons who made the breed uh, uh, was working on the breed he used a bloodhound bitch with a basset hound male. And okay. can you imagine mating a basset hound male with a bloodhound bitch? Especially do, you know, do you know how he did it? Artificial insemination, it was made last century. How he did it, I, I think that 
everybody says that it was the first time that an artificial insemination was made. Okay. I don't know how did he made it, perhaps with a spoon, or I don't know. <laughs> so but, he was in the <laughs> But he did it. But, uh, you know, I think that, uh, uh, um, that, that eyes, more and more, you need to, to have very healthy eyes. And that's one of the things, uh, when I'm judging Bassett's, I search. You know, uh, 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 Bassett hounds must have an healthy eye. You know, I can accept a little, a little that the conjunctive is showed a little bit, but not too much. That's, you know, those days are gone. <laughs> So I think that answers the issue's question. So the deviation is very minimal. The error for deviation is very yeah. minimal. Yeah. Yeah. You want to ask because, as you said, you don't want the hyper type coming up in the brain. So the next question is also from Ishwar. He is on the topic of women. He is asking how serious is a problem is padding. Uh, I don't. We don't have so many bassets padding. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, normally they move. They, they move well, but I think that padding is. He, 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 is is a problem in any breed you know it's uh, uh, but in bassets it's it's not so common to have uh, um, a, a dog a dog petting uh, mm -hmm. uh, because um, normally sometimes what you have are dogs that don't have rich enough you know a basset must have a good rich and drive and for that they must be well angulated and they must have something that is very uh, 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 difficult at the moment to find. It's a dog, uh, a, a basset, must, the front of a basset. The length of the upper arm must be the same length of the, uh, of the shoulder blade. Okay. And normally the bassets. And it's not only the bassets. Nowadays it's a common, a common problem in other breeds. They have short upper arms. And when they have short, uh, upper, uh, short upper arms, the reach it's not enough. Mm -hmm. and that's something that it's uh, uh, it's a problem in the breed. And when you judge uh, uh, bassets, you must always pay a lot of attention for the, the the upper arm. It must be the same length. It's not it's not easy to find dogs with 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 this with these proportions. But. <laughs> I think that addresses the issue's question. Sir, can you go to the next one? So, as a breed specialist, what, according to you, are the most distinctive confirmation characteristics for the bassets? We did talk about the temperament. We are now talking about what are the most distinctive confirmation characteristics. <clears throat> okay. So, I think that the basset must have... So the, the, the first thing, when, when you judge a basset, they must have... It, 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 it's the expression and the type, you know, uh, when you judge, and I think that, that that's what I think in, in, all, in all breeds, when you judge a breed, they must have first type, you know, you must reach, you must look at a cocker, and it's, you are looking at a cocker, and you, you don't confuse it with the Springer or with some, some other breed. When you look at the Basset, you need to have the type. Then in a basset, they must have a, a very soft expression. Okay. Now and also, they must have clean eyes, and that's what I've told before uh, 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 about the eyes. And something very important in the breed is the ear. The ear must set, must have a low set and a very soft texture and they must be very soft a velvet texture and why do they have to have a velvet texture as i've told in the beginning these are hunting dogs and why they have these long ears they have these long ears because when they are hunting when they are hunting they must the ears they have the function of a funeral you know so the scent comes so to the nose. And they must have this velvet texture because in the terrain they can have, you know, vesh, uh, you know, very spines and something, and, and they are oh. velvet because they go all, all, all over. 
Then for me, a Basset must have a good construction and very important, they must have a wonderful, a very happy temperament and a very uh, easy movement with a, an excellent reach and drive. And that's very important on the, on the Basset. And this, these are the main. Then you have, you know, things that you that sometimes you you, you have in the breed, rib cages. Sometimes has this. Uh, this is a bastard. Uh, sometimes uh, they don't have uh, good rib cages because in the, in the, in the, the, to be a bastard, they are they are not for common and normal dogs they are short leg dogs and um, the tail is very important because the tail shows to the hunter where the dog is why no. and some people say oh they must have a, a white tip of the tail the standard doesn't say anything you know that's a plus because when the dog is hunting the, the hunter can see where he is he has a, 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 a white a, a white tip <laughs> Now, while at this, do you think that uh, there's a lot of coarseness which has come in the breed over the years? A lot of, sorry? Uh, do you feel that the Bassets have become a bit coarse? Oh, yeah. The uh, uh, they were. They were. Yes, they were. I think that the, the, the breed improve, improve a lot. Okay. You know, I think that now, nowadays, the, the, you know, in that question, you know, we had, we also, we had terrible fronts, you know. Uh, okay. We had... Uh, a lot of dogs with 10 to 2 fronts, you, you see those open, and more and more uh, you have correct fronts, you know, with nice feet. Uh, uh, but I think that uh, cross dogs, we don't see so, so many anymore, you know. The breed improved a lot in the last years, but, you know, sometimes you, you, you see dogs with, with folds, but that's normal because Bassets are, as you have seen, uh, bassets they, they are not they are not a very old breed so uh, we still have uh, uh, genetically we, we still have problems that come from those days and uh, and that's that that that's the fascination of breeding you know uh, always searching always searching to have ni ni nice dogs and uh, very important never be kennel blind you know always you need to be uh, to, to be always to, uh, very critical in what concerns the dog you are breeding okay so that makes a lot of sense <laughs> like an expert. okay i again go back to this uh, it's more like a uh, conjugate to the next question so has a breed improved globally over the last two decades can you shed light on which areas they have improved? Yeah, that, that I, I, I've told you before. You know, I think that the, the, in the last decades, the, the, the breed the breed improved a lot. I think that, you know, in the in, in, in the nineties nineties uh, and the, the the first decades of twenties, we had better dogs than we are having at the moment more bad you know now you can also find nice dogs but i think that we had a golden uh, time that mm -hmm. were the last decade of um, uh, 90s and and the first decade of the 2000s That's but uh, we are improving but that's normal you know all the breeds have ups and downs and uh, I think that we improved in a lot of uh, particularities of the of the of the basset. Eyes, as I've told before, you know, heads. Sometimes, you know, years ago we had very heavy heads with uh, with very heavy skulls, and mm -hmm. also fronts. Fronts we improved a lot in fronts. Many years ago, and then some years ago, we had a, a lot of dogs that um, the dogs that were showed were had fronts with very open, very open fronts. You know, ten to what we call ten to two. You know, dogs that and and you know that's a morphology. Uh, 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 
fault. And when you think that bassets are hunting dog, dogs, a dog with a nice front can move much better than the dog with a tentative front. Okay, so we always need to think that fit for function and bassets are hunting dogs. That's uh, good to hear, Jesse, because whenever I speak, I am into boxers and English cockers. When we speak to uh, breeders, they keep saying that the golden age is in the past. It is not the current age. You are <laughs> saying with Bassett, it is more of the current age that is more golden. It's in the, at least the last day, one decade, you're saying they've improved a lot and they're looking good. So that makes a good note of uh, going with the breed. So I think we'll go to the next question. Okay, there is one more from Mr. Ishwa. Uh, he is asking, does the slope of the spine in the Basset makes it prone to muscular stress in movement and dysplasia? Uh, uh, Basset, the slope, the, the, the slope of the spine uh, 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 doesn't make it prone to, 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 to sternum, no. I think, I, I think that normally, 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 uh, when Basset's have a, a, a sloping uh, um, top line, you know, drop to the withers, you know, from from the the the, the, the tail set to the withers. Mm -hmm. Normally, it's because they have uh, uh, they don't have enough angulation behind, okay. or they have very long hocks. Okay. And okay. in kind, uh, in, in movement and dysplasia, you know, we don't have, we have made some uh, tests in bassets, and dysplasia it's not common in bassets. Okay. It's not it's not a, a breed that has commonly dysplasia. It's uh, I, I don't remember I don't remember to hear a breeder that had a, a, a basset with dysplasia. They had other problems, they had other problems, but not displayed yet. That is good news, at least for a, a pet owner who aspires to have a basset, because this place is very painful on the dog as well as the owners. So oh, yes, that, yes, yes, of course. Of, it is a great news, I said. So I think that answers the first question. Say that, can you go to the next one? So, where I talked about the earlier question, so while well, said, which areas do you feel the breed has deteriorated as against the dogs from the past? We are talking about areas the dog has really done well. Now, the question is about which areas have the dogs deteriorated? I think, I, 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 I think that the, the overall, the overall construction mm -hmm. of, a, of the, the nowadays bassets is not as good as the ones that we had earlier. And also, I think that's a question of also of breeders. When you have a, a high competition between breeders, mm -hmm. uh, there is, you know, there is always, uh, the competition makes that the breeders will uh, always try to have better, better, and better dogs. And nowadays, I think that the competition between breeders is not as uh, hard as it was years ago. Uh, um, but judging judging bassets all over Europe, and uh, and I've judged them at Crafts this year as well. Uh, you can see that you can see that. Um, and I had a nice entry of bassets in at Crafts. I had 156, I think, wow. uh, 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 um, and my, you know, my best of breed was from the UK, very nice male, uh, but my my best bitch and best of breed was later third in group, at the Hound Group, which is very uh, rare. Only one dog, I think, that only Bass Barrow Sullivan was placed uh, in the group. My best of breed was a bitch from Italy, and she was third uh, in the group. But as, uh, as as you can as you can see, we can still have very nice bassets. But I think that the overall quality dropped. Absolutely. Is not is not as good as it used to be. So you're saying that there is not much of consistency. There are very good dogs, and then their overall quality yeah, has yeah. become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that um, I, I, I think that that we we could find. I remember judging in Denmark 
the club show. And it was a joy, you know. And you were judging for best of breed, and you were saying, what am I going to do with so many beautiful dogs? And you, had to go, and you had to go to the minor things, you know, to start to... And, uh, uh, you know, I had Sweden as well, Italy as well, you know, France as well. I remember in France, you used to have a club show, sometimes with 300 bassets, which is impressive. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have that anymore. <laughs> but why do you think the competition between the breeders have come down or they don't have that fair or healthy competition happening where they're trying to improve the bit? What happened? What went wrong? I, I, I think that, we, you know, we, we we live in another times and people you know some people there there are not so many new breeders and i'm not i'm not talk i'm not only talking about bassets i'm talking about um in the most yeah Very good, I, I think that the the, the interest is of the young generation uh, uh, and you know this is a hobby and it is that that takes a lot of work that takes you a lot of time and um and nowadays, the, the young generation are not so dedicated to dogs as we were. <laughs> I think that's a worldwide concern now. Uh, who's yeah, that's a worldwide who concern, to yes. Go to the next uh, forum. You, know, you, need, you need to find a young, uh, 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 young generation that is interested in dogs. That's very important. Wonderful. Thanks, Rajasik. Say that again. We go to the next one. So uh, while we're talking about breeding and breeders, so what is your breeding philosophy? We have inbreeding, we have line breeding, we have outcrossing. What is your ideology of uh, breeding? Bassets? You know, I, 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 as I've told you before, I'm uh, 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 in my in my uh, concept. I think that line breeding is what we need to do, and sometimes we need to. You need to go to outcross. Okay. Because you start to get to go to very close, and you need to 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 outcross. But uh, uh, when when you uh, work with line breeding, you are creating your own type, and that's I think that's that's the most important thing. When when I if I look at the Bassett. And sometimes I'm judging abroad, and uh, I don't know the dogs. And when I'll go and I'll see the winner dog, I I go behind. I say, "Where is this dog from? This, this, this?" And the tal, tal, tal. And sometimes the grandparents are from my kennel. Okay, you will see the type so every day. So it's it's the type, you know. You know that's that's very important to create your own type, and. Uh, uh, and, and 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 you can only do it when you uh, working with line breeding. Sometimes you need to do outcross. It's true. I have did I, I did it uh, several times because I was getting too close, and then I had to open. And but you must pay a lot of attention when you are introducing uh, new bloodlines on, on, on your on your lines. You need. But, but uh, two things. One thing is, and for me, it's the most important. Important, healthy. You know, mm. the dogs must be health, but the healthy dogs, they don't. They they must. Uh, they don't uh, uh, bring to your bloodlines uh, health problems. And the other thing, it's uh, the construction. You know. That's you must you must um, you must know very well the the lines of the dog that you are putting into your lines. That's that's very very important. So, but while at it, we are talking about cho choice of blood lines and all this stuff. When you are line breeding, you have a very defined concept. You know which lines and what are you using. When you are doing an outcross, other than the health aspect, how do you choose the blood lines? Then you know first is L, the the health thing, and then and, and then is the morphology. You know you need you need to, to for instance you need, you are using a stud dog. Mm -hmm. You need to see the parents. How is first thing? Study the dog. 
okay? to uh, uh, um, see if the dog is well constructed. Second thing, what the dog has to improve your lines because all our lines have problems. So you need to see, okay, this dog and what can he bring to my lines? That's very important as well. But first thing, he must be well constructed and then the other thing. And then you must study the pedigree. You must look how was his grandfather, uh, the, the grandfather, the father, the mother, the grandfather studied the pedigree. Look at the type of dog that uh, uh, is behind and then choose. That's the, 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 that's the main, but, but for me, the, the main thing is morphology and also very important, temperament. I would never, never, ever put a dog on my bloodlines who is a shy dog. It could be a painting, the perfect dog in, in construction, but with a shy temperament or an aggressive temperament, never ever. Because I can tell you that temperament for me, it's something that is uh, uh, transmitted in, in, in very easily. You know, a dog, uh, 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 a dog can 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 give a shy a shy dog can give you a sh shy puppies. Shy puppies. So, as a thumb of rule, uh, in how many generations in once do you think of doing an outcross, or is it very? Uh, object to saying that this is something I'm suddenly started liking, so I want to move out, or is it a thumb of rule logic you have of an outcross? That depends. You know, uh, uh, I, I I think that, uh, that 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 that's not easy to answer because that's also when when you you are you are having you are using. Uh, uh, um, a dog and a bitch, and sometimes we have puppies, and uh, you see mm, this. You, you sometimes, and as I've told you before, sometimes uh, uh, some faults, some serious faults, are coming out, and that's because, as I've told you before, the the, the breed is not an old, a very old breed, True. and genetically, when when you you are inbreeding, also. You can have all the good things coming out, but it's very easy to have the bad things coming out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes when you see, you, you see that the, 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 you are having some problems with the, with the puppies and uh, the, the, the lines are too close, you need to, to uh, go okay. out. And, and, and sometimes there, are, there is also uh, something that makes you make an outcross, which is you have a you you find a beautiful dog, a beautiful stud uh, uh, with a with a beautiful morphology, a wonderful temperament and movement. And if there is a stud dog like that, it's time to pick it up. <laughs> Get those good virtues into the lines. Right? Yeah. On, on this topic, I was also trying to add another thing. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If, if you get to see the progeny also of this stud dog, then it makes a lot of value addition, isn't it? While choosing a stud dog for an outcross. You see a oh, very consistent ty ty type of progeny that he's able to produce, then it makes a lot of value add to the selection process, isn't it? Yes, 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 yes. You need you, you, you need you know, and then and then is the question, you know, this this I always say genetic is not mathematics, it's not two and two is four. And and sometimes you have beautiful dogs that are not good stud dogs. Correct. And sometimes you know, have not as good dogs that are beautiful stud dogs. So yeah. um, to have, you know, we I, I was very lucky with the dog I've showed you before, the Uta Pentagon. Mm -hmm. That dog, and, and, and if you look at the, the, the most of the, the, the top dogs nowadays in Europe, if you go behind this dog is there because until then the dogs had the, the european dogs uh they didn't have a good movement you know they were very heavy they were very heavy dogs and uh and the temperaments you had a lot of uh, problems uh, with with temperaments and that dog improved a lot in uh, in, in, in the european lines 
that's great. I think that's a big contribution to the breed. Uh, yes, you know, yes, it was. It was. I was I was very lucky. <laughs> Yeah, as you already said, that luck does a big part because. Oh, yes, luck is a big part. As I've told you before, <laughs> genetic is not met. Max. <laughs> sure, wonderful. Seth, can you go to the next one? Okay, now at the topic of breeding. So, how do you evaluate a litter of Bazetron puppies and to select for the best of show, confirmation? And Listen, I always say the first thing that I'll see is when they still wet. Okay. When they are born and they are wet i can you know I, I i can see that i like i don't like i like this i like that okay that's that's because i'm here at my office you know the dogs the dogs uh, here at home they they live at home here is my office we i'm at the ground floor and on on my on my left side it's the 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 the, the, the dogs house so okay. all the dogs live at home all the dogs live at home. They, they have a park where they can go. But and all my litters, they are born here in my office. Oh, okay. And I sleep at least the first week here next to them uh, to, 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 to watch them because, uh, you know, basset uh, bitches sometimes, you know, they, they, they can lie down on, on, on the puppies and, and it's very important. And and then and then when they are teething on the mother, when they are drinking their milk, you can start to see the way you know they move in front, pushing the, the okay. mother teeth. Yeah. They can That's see right. how the rears are, and then there is and then you 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 choose. And then normally in bassets you can have a lot of surprises with fronts, as I've told you before. Okay. They can have nice fronts with uh, three months and then all of a sudden they start to open the pool but and then they have a terrible age which is the the, the young age but normally when you have uh, you can shoot I, I i've normally it's when they are born and when they are more or less four or five months you can you you, you, you can select the puppies you can make but, but uh, uh, i had surprises i had surprises as well, especially, especially with fronts. That's the main problem in bassets. Our bassets they are that have uh, uh, very nice fronts, and when they start growing, they have a deviation in in, in, in fronts, and uh, and that's a problem for me, you know. So basset hound breeders and connoisseurs, you need to be very conscious about the fronts. Those are uh, yes, fronts. Fronts are, 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 are terrible. <laughs> and how, is there a way of correcting this deviation? If there is, as you rightly said, you see this puppy and he's got a fabulous front and you pick him up, you retain him, maybe because of the way you raise the environment in which he is raised, there is a problem of the front pass play. So is there a way that you get to correct that? No. You know, this, this I've told you before, you know, uh, um, the bassets uh, uh, in the early ages uh, had very, very bad fronts. Really, you know, all the bassets were ten to two, and okay. that's something that comes from from the lines. Okay. And, and, and you need when people are asking, me, "Oh, can he improve?" I always say, "Don't think about it. Don't, don't think about it because uh, if he has that problem, it's like rib cage problems when they have." A basset must have a barrel rib cage and smooth, and a very and a basset with a, with a very big capacity. You know, they are hunting dogs. They must have space lung. for lung and heart. Uh, uh, otherwise, otherwise, it, it's not a good rib cage. So, so we'll have. I think there's a viewer question. Okay, there is one from Mr. Ishwar again on the topic <laughs> of disqualification and faults. Would you put on a dog that is sound in construction and type, but is over the recommended height, more than 15 to 16 inches? As oh, way. yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, he, he must, a dog, uh, you know, we, we don't need to have giants. You know, mm -hmm. we used to have, that was one of the problems, one of the problems that, okay. um, that uh, uh, we had in our breed. Uh, 
in question of disqualification, uh, uh, um, that dog, I don't know if I would disqualify him, but I would give him a very low grade. Because if, it, if it's, let's, let's think that we have a beautiful dog, very well constructed, but he's over the 38 centim centimeters. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is the standard. I think that uh, if he was really nice, I think that I wouldn't disqualify him because he could be acceptable to be used in some lines. If you, use, you could use him in small bitches. Okay, so that's that's um, that depends that depends on the quality. Uh, 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 if, he, if, if he was sound in construction type, uh, you know, if he was a beautiful dog but big, I wouldn't. But, you know, I, 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 I think it's very difficult to find a basset over 38 centimeters. Okay. It's not, it's, it's, it, it's not easy. I can, I can tell you, I can tell you that perhaps I had one or two Mm -hmm. that were over but okay. thank god they were not nice dogs so i had that okay so for a novice enthusiast who would want to show and breed basset hounds what is your piece of advice okay first thing the foundation bitch if someone wants to start to breed any breed, any breed, you know, try to speak with breeders. Try to speak with good breeders. Try to discuss with them. Try to know about the breed and do everything you can to buy a nice puppy bitch. That's the most important thing. I always say a puppy bitch because then you can breed your bitch. You can choose a male, you know, it's, then, then you can choose a male. But the most important thing is a broad bitch. It's a foundation bitch. You know, that's the, in any breed, in any breed, I think that the foundation breed bitch is, 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 is the, the most important thing. And then, when you start breeding, be very critical on your dogs. And that's the only way to, 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 to breed nice dogs. If, if, if you are not critical, if you are kennel blind, as we say in our, our sport, that's terrible. But, uh, you know, sometimes my wife is always saying, oh, because I'm looking at the puppies, I don't like that one, I look at that one. It's a, you, and my wife is telling me, you, 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 you're crazy, you're, you're, you're doing <laughs> but, too much, too much, you're too critical. And, 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 um, and, but that's the way, that's the way you, you breed good dogs. You must be critical. You must be critical. And uh, uh, if, 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 if if look, if if you see and I can I can if you can show me again the my my foundation bitch and I can the tell you the number one the number one yes listen this was many many years ago I think that this bitch could win again still winning could could still winning in in, in, in now, nowadays you see she has she has a wonderful head we're speaking about the eyes look she doesn't has the, the, the lower lip she has well she is well angulated in front she has a wonderful top line she has the nice proportion there is the can in front but you can see that she has two has one third two thirds she was she's well angulated behind with a nice tail so that's and all my all my bassets, all the dogs I have, they have this bitch behind. And 
I thank her for all the winning. I'm always saying this was my angel. <laughs> this was my guard, my guard angel. And um, so for, 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 for novice enthusiasts in any breed, in any breed, I think that the most important thing is the foundation bridge. That's the best advice for the novice to start off with the right uh, bridge. I, I think that is something which is universal. As I said, I am with uh, boxers and cockers. You always talk about the right foundation bridge, the tail bridge line to pursue so that you have the right start, which gives a huge head start in terms yeah, of Yeah, because spend. you know what happened to me, I've told you before, you know, I start breathing. But all of a sudden, I say, I don't like what I'm breathing. Mm -hmm. And I've changed totally. True. I've changed totally. You know, I never, in my lines, you cannot find, in my pedigree, my uh, nowadays pedigrees, you, can f you cannot find anything before this bitch. Mm -hmm. You know, because I totally erase all those lines from my breathing. Because I mean, it's a lot of guts to do because again, going back to my uh, breeds, I, I have smooth fox terriers. My mentor did that. She started, did have fox terriers for close to 10, 15 years. Then realizing that there are health issues, she totally wound up that line, started afresh from a yes. line from Australia. So that yeah. is important you need to take the call. And you must critical to, to do that. You know, you must you must be honest with yourself. You must be honest with yourself because if you're trying to arrange the things, it will take you ages. And I don't know if you if you reach the the, the good point. <laughs> yeah, even after spending so many years, you might not be able to achieve what it means. Yeah, <laughs> and that, you know that's the night that that that, that that's was uh, uh, give us all the the, the 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 strength to breathe. You know, we always need to be critical and to have better and better and better. And that's the fun thing. That's the fun thing. When the breeders say, "Oh, I have uh, perfect dogs," I say, "Oh no." <laughs> then you're not getting objective. I said, "There's no dog is perfect." Yeah, it's some 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 people sometimes saying some breeders say, oh, "I never had this, I never had that, I never had this," and so I had all that. Thank God, because you know, in bassets we have some problems that that and some healthy problems, and thank God I never had a, a health problem in my lines. Mm -hmm. But I had undershot, overshot. I had long hair. I had blue eyes. I had kinky tails. I had all that, you know. But that's the way it is. You must accept. You must accept it. And when breeders tell me, I never had this, and I'm, so come on, you must be honest with yourself. <laughs> Very true. I think it's a diminishing, uh, what to say, earthic value that is happening, going on in the world, as a dog world, per se. Next <laughs> one. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I was talking about mentors. Now we we'll go to that question. What are your views on finding a good mentor while learning the ropes of a specific breed? And would you be keen to be a mentor to an enthusiast when you find him or her to be genuine? That's what I, 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 I've told you. I've told you before. When you want to start breeding, speak with the breeders, find the good breeders, speak with them, and try to find a mentor to one of those good breeders that are successful on their, on their breeding, try to uh, uh, ask him to help you and, 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 and to give you advice and, and accept uh, uh, um, what he's saying. You can, you can agree or not agree, but try to learn, try to learn. And and that's the main thing. I remember that I was I I, I I was always speaking with a lot of breeders. By that time, uh, uh, um, the 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 best breeders when I started in the early were the the best breeders were in the UK and in in France. And I was going there. I was talking with them and. Uh, I can tell you that my mentor was Jacques Medard, who was the, the, the breeder in France, the breeder of my that my my foundation bitch. Okay. Uh, he he was the president of the French Basset House Club, and um, 
and and he was my mentor and you know the, the main thing is to speak with readers and learn and that's one of the problems of the young generation you know they they arrive in shows the next day they know everything and they what they want win <laughs> Yeah, that's become the craze. You know, they want to win. As we already said, they're not worried about. They want to win. They want to win. They want to win. They want to win. And 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 that's the main the main thing. And and you know it's a problem because you need you you need to do a lot of work to start winning. And another thing is that uh, and that happens sometimes. I always say it's not as hard to breed a nice dog, a winning dog. The hard thing. Is to breed one, two, three, four, five, six, and keep That's the right. level. We always have lower levels, higher levels, but don't don't have those drops. We have yeah. have consistency in what you're doing. Every litter should be able to bring in the same type of puppies, same yeah. type of dog. Yes, yes, very important. And and I can tell you, I've told you before, and you read that uh, from. From my first world winner, which was in uh, bred by me, was in '94. That mm -hmm. bitch that we saw by Uta Pendragon. Uh, from that time, from '94 until now, born here at home, I already bred 15 world winners. And 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 that's that's that <laughs> that's the good thing, you know. That's try to. Keep the level, keep the level, and that's that, that's the fun. You know, that's the fun. Is always try to breed something nice, and you know, and and then and then you, when you when you're a breeder, you know what you have in the end of the leash, you know. And uh, and and something that I always do, I could never show a bad dog to one of my colleagues, never ever, you know. That's. I'm proud. I'm proud of my dogs, and I could not use my name as a breeder to in, to, to show a, 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 a good dog. All my all my dogs they have faults. All dogs have faults. There is no perfect dog, but I could never show a bad dog. Never. It's uh, disrupting your own reputation, as you said. You've built yeah. your reputation over 30 years now, three decades. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you go to the next one, Siddhu. So now I think you're kind of coming to the tag end of the interview. What are the kennels globally which you admire in the business? Uh, um, there are there, there are three kennels that are that are that, that I respect a lot. Mm -hmm. One in America, which is Topfield. They 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 have beautiful beautiful dogs. Uh, 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 Claudia Orlando, Orlandi. Uh, 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 they have. One of one of the dogs that I've never judged, but um, I uh, I used um, is Simon uh, one in one of my bitches uh, uh, that bitch that I've showed you before the one the one that won the world show in Denmark. Unfortunately, after all the efforts, she was empty. <laughs> no no puppies, and. <laughs> It was a very, it was very frustrating for me and Claudia because we were crazy about that mating. Uh, uh, Topsfield, Topsfield is one of the the, the the kennels. Then there is another one, Sweet Sun. Uh, Sweet Sun from uh, 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 from 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 Sweden. Uh, they they have, as I've told you, uh, 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 this. Also, this this is also a very consistent uh, breeder, Paula Sunderbring. Uh, they have beautiful dogs, and as I've told you before, uh, those two dogs, come and get me and Clara, uh, were winning all over, and uh, you know, best of breed, best of opposite, best of breed, best of opposite. That's and also Van Grusman from from Holland, from Rudy Smith, is also a very clever breeder. Uh, nowadays, you know, this, this, the, if I, there are some others good kennels, but this, I think that these three, for me, and the type of dog they are breeding, 
they are they they are they are very very important kernels nowadays. Wonderful. I I did have the opportunity to feature uh, Claudia uh, in the Indian Kennel Gazette for the breed interview. As oh, okay. Said, is an extremely uh, brilliant, clever breeder. As you can say. Oh, she is. <laughs> so, can you name three basset hounds which, according to you, have influenced the breed very positively as a stud dog or as a brood bitch? Okay. Be your dog, be any dog other than your dog. I think dog. that I think that as as you told as I've told before as I've told before. Uh, 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 Uta Pendragon in Europe, the dog that I imported, it was very, very important in the breed here in Europe. And that gave a lot of uh, good dogs. There is also a dog uh, that I think that improved a lot uh, in, um, in the UK, Bas Barrow Sullivan. Uh, that dog was a beautiful dog and uh, uh, bred by Bill O'Loughlin. Uh, in the UK, and then tops, as I've told you before, in America, Topsfield uh, and uh, uh, um, Topsfield Top Gun. Uh, 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 sorry, bumper cars, not Top Gun. Bumper cars, Topsfield bumper cars uh, uh, was was uh, a beautiful dog, and the and the dog that that um, improved a lot the breed in, in in the United States. There are some other dogs, but for me, these 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 dogs were, were very, very. Uh, they influenced the breed very, in, 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 positively as uh, as a stud dogs. The, those those were the ones. <laughs> any any reference to any specific uh, bitch? You're talking about the stud dogs. I, again, let you go back to the brood bitch concept. Uh, you know, I, I I think in my case it's the the, the bitch that I've told you, and, and and then and then you have you have also the from from um, from the UK from the from the Sweden Clara, uh -huh. Clara was was also a, 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 and, and because because Clara gave also to Paula Sennegreen some very nice products. So she okay. was. She was which that went best of breed and best of horse sex. Yes. 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 Wonderful. Okay, I think that's the wrap. Uh, we had. Uh, we'll wrap up the interview. Thanks a lot, Joseph, for your time. Uh, it I was a pleasure. It, it was a great pleasure. Day. And uh, if someone wants something from me, they can always contact me through Facebook or or through Messenger. Uh, it will be a pleasure to help. Who, I'm sure, I am very sure we'll have a lot of comments and questions coming in the weeks to follow in this uh, video chat. We will surely forward those questions for you to answer so that we can publish it back. And from our end, from Madras Canyon Club, we uh, give this whole session on the Basset Hound as a dedication to our founding member, Dr. Matthew C. John, who had bred Basset Hounds under the Sinbob Kennels for a very long time. So unfortunately, this year we had to lose him uh, owing to COVID one of the losses that we had with COVID in 2020. But this is our dedication to you, Dr. John, wherever you are, rest in peace. So a yes. lot of love to him. And lots of, of, lots, of, lots of thanks to Jose again. And thanks to our viewers. So next week, until next week, stay home, stay safe. I know the lockdown is over, but the lockdown is over only for economic reasons. The, vir the virus is still on. We all need to be safe, ensure the social distancing. All the very best. We'll again catch up for an interesting session. That's that's true. And I can tell you that here in Portugal, we are being successful because we are keeping the social distance and we are wearing masks all over. And you can give us that insight because in India, we don't have shows for the show season. But I think in Portugal, you are already having shows and you're no, judging. I was judging. I was judging last year, uh, last weekend. Everybody with mask, social distance. That was perfect. Wonderful. I wish we could do that in India and we will start with our shows also shortly. Thanks for your lovely time, Jose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.